So, um, what is the best evidence for the resurrection in your view? <laughs> so that, uh, well, so I mean, not, say, it doesn't have to be a single evidence. Like saying, like, what's the one yeah. thing again? Well, again, it's I don't not, mean it's one a thing. A, a collection of evidence, like yeah, the, yeah. So it's hard, yeah. right? Because it's it's a it's yeah. a cumulative case kind of yeah. thing, and so you end up trying to figure out, well, how do you how do you make how do you like what? So it's it's a series of look. We're using abductive reasoning anytime we come into a death scene and try to figure out if it's a, a murder scene. In other words, every death scene can be one of four things. It could be a, an accidental, a natural, a suicide, or a homicide. Those are the four ways that people die. I'm only interested in homicides. So so I have to go in and say, well, which of these four explanations does the best job of explaining the evidence at the scene? Mm -hmm. so i'm not going to default to a homicide unless it's the best explanation of the evidence well i did the same thing with the with the with the resurrection i simply asked the question given all the ways i could explain the resurrection mm -hmm. which explanation makes the best sense of the minimal evidence i would have been willing to agree to which would have been something simple like okay dude named jesus lives uh, he gets, he gets ex executed on a cross. People claim he rose from the grave. I didn't believe in all that stuff, but that's, those are the claims. And uh, they, they were willing to die for their, their claims. That's very minimal. I would have granted you as a non-believer, but you still got to explain that minimal stuff. And by the way, yeah. that's stuff I talk about in cold case. But if you look at person of interest, the latest book, if he yeah. really rose from the dead, yeah. wouldn't yeah. you expect that to be a pretty big ripple effect? I mean, he'd make a wave, wouldn't he? Yeah, and as you good. examine history and say, okay, two options. One, he's a mythological character who never lived and never rose or died, mm -hmm. never was born. That's one. Let's make three options. That's one. Or two, he's an ancient Jewish sage who, who died on a cross and never rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. Or three, he is somebody who came, claimed to be God, did miracles as though he was God, died on a cross and rose from the grave as though he's God. Mm. Of those three options, which one makes better sense given how history turned out? Yeah, the fact that no one's been written about more than Jesus, mm -hmm. and in their writings you can reconstruct the story of Jesus. The fact that no one's been painted or sung more than Jesus, and from those paintings and songs you can reconstruct the story of Jesus. The fact that no schools have been founded on the basic principles of a worldview more than the worldview established by Jesus, and even from the campuses of those universities you can look at the images and scriptures located there and reconstruct the story of Jesus from the top fifteen universities in the world today. And the fact yeah. that even science, all the personal journals of the science fathers who established more disciplines of science than any other group combined mm -hmm. from their personal journals, you can reconstruct the story. Well, which of these, you know, which of these versions of Jesus, the myth, yeah. the yeah. regular guy who just died, you know, the lie, or yeah. the real risen savior, which makes more sense mm -hmm. of the way history turned out of what I don't think you're going to establish a new century on the myth or on a regular yeah. guy. But we have established the common era upon the teaching and worldview inaugurated by Jesus of Nazareth, I think because he was who he said he was, and the Gospels actually record something true. Yeah. Yeah, I remember uh, when I was in Jerusalem on a trip, the Jewish tour guide was a, not technically a believer, but he under he believed in the resurrection of Jesus because, you know, these Jewish tour guides, they primarily deal with Christians uh, on their tours. So he was forced to really consider the fact of how does Christianity exist from the circumstances in which it was born, unless Christ really did rise from the dead. He, he understood just the historical impact of, yeah. of this one person. It, it made sense for his disciples to have not just uh, encountered great teaching, they must have encountered something much bigger than that. I think that's kind of what you're pointing to with this right. ripple of, uh, effect right. case. It's that fuse mentioned. and fallout yeah. of history we talk about yeah. in person of interest. Yeah, I think that that really, I, those, I, I, it was really that work of looking at everything inside the New Testament, like I wrote about in Cold Case Christianity, and then everything outside the New Testament, like I wrote about in person of interest, that took me, I would say, about eight to nine months. Yeah. And about maybe eight months into that, I told Susie that I think I'm pretty close to, I just didn't understand yet what mm. the gospel was. You can do the, the heavy uh, lifting yeah. to determine that the gospels are telling you the truth, yet not mm. still understand 
the gospel. In other yeah. words, why? I asked this of Susie. Why? Why would Jesus though have to die on if there is a God and He is God coming up to Earth in the form of, of Jesus? What's the whole cross thing about? Like, why die that way? Why? Why die at all this way? You know, I, I just didn't understand. That's why I say. But now I was willing because I had knocked down so many of the barriers that stood between me and the gospel. Yeah. I was willing to hear the gospel for the first time. Yeah. And that's what we're doing here. A lot of people will sometimes wonder if this is an esoteric an esoteric exercise in which we are just trying to right. make people who already believe feel better about their false beliefs. Mm -hmm. Well, the reality of it is, is for a lot of us, we have constructed barriers between ourselves and the plain hearing of the one message that could change everything. Yes. Think about that. We have mm -hmm. so much has happened in the last year. So mm -hmm. much has been talked about related to a race. So much has been talked about related to everything that, you, I mean, how many people, most of us could find something to complain about right now. Yeah. But it turns out that every form of stupid we could think about <laughs> is addressed and solved by the gospel. The gospel cures every form of stupid that humans could ever engage in. Yeah. And here it is. We won't listen. <laughs> we, the one <laughs> thing that could change it all for us is the one thing we're finding ourselves having a harder and harder time to even speak about publicly. Mm -hmm. So what, the, what this work does, what your podcast does, what your YouTube channel does is to help people hear the truth because it's a, it's an uncomfortable and inconvenient truth, yeah. right? Cause it's a truth that requires you to surrender you. Yeah. And most of us have been raised in a culture based on the kind of the shiny glowing rectangle that mm -hmm. celebrates you, that lifts you. Every one of us can be an influencer. Yeah. Every one of us could have a YouTube channel. Every one of us could have a huge social media platform on TikTok. It's about every one of us has the access to celebrity that used to be reserved for only a few of us. Right. And in that kind of culture, it's when you want to be the celebrity, it's kind of hard to look at, at for a celebrity in the form of God.